Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Joseph Ward, and welcome to my own The Shoulders of Giants YouTube channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you share this channel. And that notification button, click that notification button so every time I drop a new video, you will know what's going on. African history at your fingertips through this channel. You're getting biographies of your sung and unsung heroes right at your fingertips. So tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend about On the Shoulders of Giants. Well, you can learn about yourself and we tell our own stories. Peace out. Granville T. Woods. On April 23, 1856, Granville Woods was born in Columbus, Ohio to parents Cyrus Woods and Martha Brown. Because his family experienced poverty, Woods only attended school until the age of 10. He then began working to help his family survive. He worked in a machine shop where he learned mechanics. Information also suggests that he worked as a railroad engineer engineer on a British ship, railroad worker, and blacksmith. Woods became interested in electrical engineering and began learning as much as he could about electricity and its concepts. From 1876 to 1878, he enrolled into a technical college and studied electrical and mechanical engineering. Upon graduation, he began working on a steamship called the Ironsides. After working on the Ironsides for two years, Woods was promoted to the chief engineer of the Ironsides. Upon returning to his home state of Ohio, he began working at the pumping stations for the Springfield, Jackson, and Pomeroy Railroad Company. His next step was becoming an engineer with the Dayton and Southwestern Railroad Company. Woods was a very brilliant and capable engineer, but he was still a black man working in the white man's world. He was continuously being denied opportunities and losing out on promotions. Channeling his frustration, Woods and his brother Lyades created the Woods Electric Company. During the time Woods was traveling as an engineer, he developed the ideas for one of his most popular inventions, the multiplex telegraph. He gained his first patents in 1984 for the steam boiler furnace and the telephone transmitter. His next patent was for an apparatus that combined the telephone and the telegraph called the telegraphony. The invention allowed someone from a telegraph station to send messages through a single wire. The invention became very popular and Woods would sell the rights of the device to the American Bell Telephone Company. In 1887, he gained another patent for a device that allowed the train stations and the engineers on the train to communicate while the trains were moving. The device was called the Synchronous Multiplex Railway Telegraph. White supremacy began to rear its ugly head when Thomas Edison tried to steal Woods' patent for the Synchronous Multiplex Railway Telegraph. Edison filed the lawsuit but was not successful. After the legal matters, Edison offered Woods a position in the Edison Electric Light Company. Woods declined the offer and remained the owner of his own company and inventions. In 1892, he created an electrical system that supplied electricity to trains every 12 feet without having wires or batteries exposed. It allowed the trains to travel without fear of electrical malfunctions. Woods was responsible for inventing the power pickup device in 1901, and he gained patents for the improved air brake systems from 1902 to 1905. He was responsible for creating over 15 appliances for railways and held close to 60 patents for his inventions. On January 30th, 1910, Woods died in New York City as one of, if not the greatest inventor in American history. Mr. Granville T. Woods, we proudly stand on your shoulders. For more information, please visit www.ontheshoulders1.com and visit www.ontheshoulders.org to learn more about the On the Shoulders of Giants nonprofit organization.